Welcome, everyone. I'm sharing with you today some words from Acts chapter 6, beginning at verse 8. This is the account of one of the followers of Christ in the early church, whose name is Stephen. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. I'll stop reading there. What we find here is that the words of Jesus that he spoke to his first disciples in the Gospels were coming true. Stephen was not among the 12 disciples, but the very things that Jesus said would happen to his followers were already beginning to happen, and Stephen was experiencing them. Jesus said it this way, If they do these things to me, they will certainly do them to you. This is a page out of the book of the religious leaders who persecuted and finally arrested and put Jesus to death. Now they are doing it to one of his followers. And it isn't difficult to see that even in our day, certainly in other parts of the world where the Christian faith is declared to be illegal, and in other parts of the world where Christians simply are persecuted to a lesser or greater degree for following Christ, it's not difficult to see that these things go on in our day. Nor should we be surprised that as we live and follow Jesus by faith here in this world, that we are going to meet with opposition. It's not that we are to go out looking for it, but if we're going to be faithful to Christ, the enemy is going to come against him, us, and those who are in alliance with him will come against us. How do we respond to this? Do we respond in fear and, and huddle in the corner and, and look for ways to, to, to save ourselves? No, we, we trust in the Lord and we continue to follow him by God's grace and faith. And what we're going to find in a passage like this is that God will give us what we need for that time. God gives to Stephen the words that he is to say at the right time. He will do the same for us. We need not be afraid. Instead, we think of the great promises that Jesus has laid up for us. The New Testament is full of examples of, though we have trouble here in this life, the greatness of God's promises will be more than worth it. For what are the promises of God? That Jesus is preparing a place for us. That Jesus, as he talks about in the Beatitudes, in his Sermon on the Mount, says that those are blessed, those who are, are persecuted, and all sorts of false things are said about them because of the name of Jesus, that they are blessed. Why? Because great is our reward in heaven. Yes, we have trouble here as we follow Christ, but God has great things in store for us, things that he showers upon us by his grace. Simply put, God loves you. He's preparing a way for you. And though we struggle here in this world, we have amazing things to look forward to because of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for those great gifts, gifts that you shower upon us by your grace. Help us day by day to follow you, though we face opposition, and to trust that no matter what may happen to us here in this life, that you love us and that you have prepared amazing things for us in the life to come. So we trust in you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. Amen. God's blessings and peace be to you.